Hello, this is part of my series on performance and Google Core Web Vitals, particularly focusing on Beaver Builder. Here I'm looking at image loading and in particular the preloading of images, which is a technique I've been employing quite successfully recently, although I think there may be are better ways than what I am going to show you here. So I'm putting this out to the community to see if there's anyone who can come up with some better ideas. But before I move on to that, I should cover some of the basics of image loading. Stuff that I've skirted over in other videos but haven't made specific to Beaver Builder. And I think the key thing I need to get over when it comes to performance now is that it's an experience measure and it is all about what is loading in the viewport of your devices. And a key measurement in this is what Google are calling the largest contentful paint, which is the time it takes to load the largest element in the viewport. For this, I'm going to be using my performance.beaverjunction.com site and I'm going to be be focusing on one of the templates that I've optimized. I've called it business here. It's the default template. Let me just show you this. That comes with the free version of Beaver Builder. And this is what it looks like. I have featured this in earlier videos. It was fairly easy for me to get a 100 score on desktop and mobile with it just by optimizing the images in the viewport and swapping out the background image for a smaller one for mobiles and I got a good result. Recently I've improved that a little bit or at least the largest contentful paint with doing some preloading. So I've got separate images and by doing that previously I would have got about 1.5 seconds on the simulated 3G connection you get on the mobiles and on the desktop it would be about 0.4 gone down to 3 here for this preloading. So it shaves something off before I was getting 100 okay it was one second clear of what i needed to get on the mobiles but this just improves things a little bit further but before i move on to that let me just cover some of the basics that i did here and some of the things that i might have missed off on the other videos so let me go back to my notes the first thing obviously is to be optimizing the images concentrating with the ones in the viewport i use short pixel for this it's a plugin that's free on the repository if you connect to their account you get 100 free credits per month however if you tick on the box that says do you want to opt optimize the thumbnails as well and say you've got five of those then you're only going to get 20 credits per month but of course you can go to their site itself where I believe you can upload in one go 50 images and just download those yourself but it is a service that I'd recommend there are others out there which I haven't tried but I've been using this for a number of years and I'm really happy with it one other thing I should mention I didn't know about this until quite recently and I think it changed a couple of years ago I knew when I started using WordPress back in 2007 that when you uploaded an image into the media library it would reduce the quality by 10 percent a couple of years ago they swapped this out to 30 and I, I think most people i know don't know this happened so if you are manually optimizing your images say you go to the short pixel site and you've not got short pixel in there you will then go straight into the media library and take another 30 percent off so something to be aware of there obviously what we wanted to do on the site that i optimized was to swap out the image and that's pretty easy to do let's just go Go into the template here go into my row settings and we've got a background of photo and here is the one on desktop if I just load one in for desktop it will cascade to the other sizes so what I want to do is to go in here and what I did do is to go down to the mobile device and then select an entirely different image one that is much smaller this is something that's been added to Beaver Builder for maybe the last couple of years but before that there was a plugin thanks to Tom Carlos who's one of the heroes of the Beaver Builder community created a way have been able to do that but now it's part of the default and while I'm here it's probably worth me mentioning another trick that might be useful but not appropriate for all designs is that you might want to control what's in your viewport what people are seeing not to bring in the below the fold content and you can do that by going to the heights setting the minimum height to a viewport height of whatever you select here you could put it 100 percent but i've allowed a little bit for the header and you can set these responsively so so you don't really want to be pulling in some of the extra content below on your devices otherwise it's going to have an impact on your speed there so on certain designs you can just set that so it's not going to happen i think earlier i had that set 
to 90 and it left a little bit of white space but it wasn't bringing in any of the images so maybe that's a little tip there also you might not want to load any background image for your mobile devices maybe the image at desktop doesn't make any sense any longer and you just want a plain color well you can't do that in the interface with beaver builder but a bit of simple css will be able to fix that so i've got this here so what i needed to do was to go into my row settings to the advanced tab and then stick in a custom selector under my class selectors i called it hero dash row and what I've done is I've got a media query as soon as it hits the breakpoint for mobiles then it's going to not display the background image so you can use this if you want but what you might want to do is to go in and specifically set a row background color if that's not already being set there so it shows that instead okay let's move on to some other points I hadn't mentioned before that we probably want to watch our image formats short pixel will if convert your PC PNGs to a JPEG which tends to be better for the photographic type images to get the kind of file size down. I tend to get a warning coming up from Google PageSpeed Insights about using PNGs because I'm old school I still use fireworks rather than Photoshop and it has a way of being able to save out 8-bit alpha transparent pings which are very lightweight but I tend to get a warning. I had mentioned previously that there wasn't support in WordPress for WebP format which is undoubtedly the small this one without disintegrating the quality of your images it this is now changing in version 5.8 which is coming out in July 2021 there's going to be support for it so what I was saying before is that if you uploaded a WebP format it wouldn't crop it it wouldn't turn it into thumbnails that's going to change soon it probably isn't going to change how I will work with it there still isn't the browser support mostly with Safari holding things back so you need to have some way of swapping out the images and I found and Paul Lacey's back me up who's been doing a similar kind of experimenting that that time swapping over probably is no greater than the time you save with smaller image files but I'll be experimenting some more now it's going to be there in default because it might just behave nicely so I'll be testing that again a quick tip here that I've thrown in if you are on a fast internet connection well then lucky you because I generally am not so I see how slow my images are loading but if you want to do that so you just get a flavor for how things are loading then you can go into your inspect if you're using the chromium browser and you can go into either performance or network both of them have a place where you can set throttle in so you can take it down to a slow 3g and load your pages and see how they behave it gives you quite an insight just doing that okay let's move on to the next point which is svgs as another format so if you've got kind of vector images then that's probably going to be your smallest file size depending on the complexity there typically you can do that with a logo i've done it on this site and i've changed this out from what was text before to an svg logo really easy thing to do for free there is an open source bit of software called inkscape which is really easy to use just a little tip though if you are saving out something you've made here it usually contains a lot of metadata making it twice the size it needs to be so you can go to any of the online converters that's what I do maybe there are ways of doing that within the program itself but I just haven't found them so I've gone online and each time with a Google search I seem to find a different way of minifying my SVGs but they all seem to work pretty well and it usually it's half down the size of my SVGs just getting rid of all that metadata so that's useful on a related point I put this into the Beaver Builder theme and it's got a lot of good settings in there you can put in a different image for your mobiles for retina but what it doesn't have is an ability to set a width it does it automatically makes it a lot easier to use but what you'll probably find is that Google PageSpeed Insights will flag up a warning of an image that doesn't have any dimensions set on it and the reason they do that because it can create a cumulative layer out shift issue which is one of the core web vitals I haven't seen that actually happen because it's up in the head and it doesn't move around at all but if you want to get rid of that warning then you, if you're using the beaver builder theme you can use this or you might just want to look out for that on any of your themes however if you're using some of the premium caching plugins I'm using WP rocket it does have a setting where you can make it apply specific widths to all of your images across your site so that will take care of that 
I've only mentioned here that I am swapping the images out on my background images. And in fact, I haven't done that with main images that might be in the viewport. I know Paul Lacey has been messing around with this. So we'll set up a photo module and just set one size to be showing on desktops and another one to be showing on mobiles. That makes it a little bit messy, particularly if you've got clients, but he says that kind of works. I have not done that. In theory, we shouldn't need to do that because for a number of years, WordPress has supported source set and it means that if you look at your code there where you've got thumbnails that go with your images they are made available in the html and the browser should select the smallest thumbnail that's appropriate to the size but it's kind of questionable as paul's found i found this as well that it does that so he, he specifies it i have not done this although i have replaced whole rows duplicating those for various different reasons generally not a good idea because it's doubling up your source code but there are some exceptions which i hope to cover in a later video what i've gone for instead is using the preloading so i'm getting round to that so let's talk a little bit about what that is it's actually known as a resource hint and there's good browser support for preload let's go and look at can i use as you can see here it's over 92 percent most of the main browsers support it and it really is a hint to the browsers to what to load first and that's really what we're doing here. So it means that if we mark something up as preload, it's going to move it to the top of the load waterfall. So let me just show you this in action. So if I go over to my GT metrics for the template we're looking at, I actually served this one up earlier before I'd done this preloading. So this is what we've got. If we go to the waterfall here, we can see that the image is here right down here this is the one that we are looking at and the css which is calling it is right at the top but it's halfway through that css so what we want to try and do with the preloading is to move this over to the top so it's preloading straight away ready for when it gets called and that's where you get the the speed saving let me just do a retest on this see if it makes any difference to this and I'll just mention one other thing. GT Metrics is only measuring the desktop view. So it doesn't see something that I would have preloaded in a mobile. So if you want to test that out, you can probably go over to web page test. I think you can do it in GT Metrics, but I think it might be in the pro versions of that. So you can just set your browser here and use this. And of course you can set it to anything else, but that's the way I've gone around testing it. Let's see what we've got here. Waterfall and what we'll see now. Yep, yeah, there is right at the top now so it's loading ready as you can see here for when this comes in so it just speeds things up generally although on this particular run it seems to have slowed things down but my experience is it's gone down and it takes it down to the 200s most of the time now where it was in the 300 milliseconds just didn't on that particular run okay so that's what we are doing here now it's how to go about doing it let me just mention that it is useful also for things like sliders so I've used it on a site that I've mentioned before where they allowed me to share the details so I've got it on the desktop view of this one this slider it always used to bug me because there's a natural fading that you get anyway but there was a delay on loading that first slider so i've preloaded this one and it's improved things a great deal i mentioned this site before because it was passing the core web vitals on the mobile which isn't isn't showing this particular thing but it's come in now and it's still doing the same for desktop as well this is one that really wasn't passing if i did the online tests at all but according to google search console it's doing pretty well and this has been my experience if you're getting too worried about testing things i found this recently on a new site it was frustrating me because i couldn't get the mobile view to be constantly high it tended to be passing the core web vitals most of the time apart from the largest contentful paint which was on the edges i was either getting 89 in the yellow or 90 just in the green but what i found is that when i tested it using my browser and using lighthouse it was usually in the high 90s so you really it's probably best to just see what the results coming in without getting too frustrated anyway that's a bit of a side thing right let's talk about how to implement this and this is what i'm not so sure about and why i'm putting this out to the community what would be an ideal way to do this is to preload those images in the head of your document that's where things belong and you would need to do that with beaver builder by adding in a kind of action like this and 
calling this up, echoing it out and pasting it into your head, which I've done with this code over here. But I found it, I got warning saying that it isn't preloading, even though I could see it in the waterfall. I wasn't sure about it. Also, if you've got other images on your site that you want to preload, it gets quite difficult. You're going to have to put in arrays. You're going to have to find your page numbers for each of these. I couldn't get this working very well. I also tried a couple of plugins as well, one called Preload Images and Pre-Party Browser Hints. And with neither of these could I get them to work in Beaver Builder for some reason. It could be entirely my fault and I haven't talked to the authors about it, but it just didn't work. So what I did is I went my own route and actually put the preloading in the body using a HTML module. And that's what's been working absolutely fine for me. But again, it's still a little bit clumsy. And it's in a way, I like the the way of working with this because you can access what images you've got because you're already in the page builder so it's easy to grab the URLs for those assuming you're not using a CDN. So let me just show you what I've set up and there's an example code for preloading. Let me go back into the template, come out of this. Now you can't see anything here because I've hidden it with page CSS. So if I just go down here, you'll see that on that module I've put in a custom selector of hide me and I've set that to none so it's disappeared so if I had a client there they wouldn't see anything at all and I would need to remember that there's something there but if I pop this to inherit I've also put some other CSS in there as well to call it out so I might decide to to have that but generally I'm setting on this the size of the module here so there's no padding and any margin on it so I don't want to interfere with the design here so let me just save this as we won't keep this open and let me go in here and this is all I needed to paste in there there's the example on my page something I discovered later was that if I was loading the main image here I wouldn't see in my inspector an error about it not loading but <laughs> I realized when I changed the size of my viewport when I was um, doing my testing I was getting some errors let me just go back to the page so I can show you so if you don't specify the widths of which to load these you get this little error that comes in which is just saying that it says you want to preload something but something didn't get loaded in so many seconds so if i've got a mobile image and i'm running the browser on desktop it's not going to be loading that image uh, at all. So it doesn't make any sense. So if you set media queries, which I've done on each of these, it gets rid of that. I don't think it slows things down, but that kind of just works on that. And that's pretty much all there is to it. There is an article where, let me just mention this again, where I've put this code in there. It was something I've taken from an article I did many, many years ago, where you could decide to restrict or show content depending on the user role. So in my documentation, if you want to go back to that, I haven't looked at it for a long time, it's got that. So you could put some extra code in. So if you wanted to use this technique and hide it entirely from that particular user, then you probably could do that as well. I haven't gone that far. I'm not sure if this is the best way to do it. It works quite well. It's convenient. If I set one of these things up, I'm going to put it in my Beaver Junction plugin so I can drag it in and it's ready to go for each project but I guess ideally we should be loading things with code in the heads so if anyone's got a great idea for doing that I would love to hear about it I have made a request to the beaver builder team to look into ways that we might be able to preload so perhaps they will come up with something themselves anyway that's enough talking for me thank you so much if you have got to the end of this video and I hope to see you in another video soon thanks a lot bye bye